coming up on The Whitney Reynolds Show. Hey, and I'm Mark Wahlberg, and I'm here with Whitney Reynolds. The Whitney Reynolds Show is made possible by Yates Protect, a minority-owned business focused on protecting communities and providing solutions to safety problems for public and private institutions, including air purification, metal detectors, thermal detection, and more. Safety is a right, not a privilege. And by O'Connor Law Firm. When it comes to your injuries, we take it seriously. Carrie McCormick, a real estate broker with At Properties. With more than 20 years of experience, she understands the importance of the customer relationship during your real estate journey. Theraderm, committed to developing skin products designed to restore and promote natural beauty. Cyton, because results matter. Additional funding provided by Midwest Moving and Storage, Galileo, The Gumdrop by Delos Therapy. Happy to meet you. Kevin Kelly with Jamison Sotheby's International Realty. Fresh Dental. Ella's Bubbles, Tutu School Chicago, High Five Sports Camp, and these funders. Coming up, the common link between every generation great people. <laughs> we are going on a journey, one that might be considered the road less traveled. But for these immigrant faces, a road they hope would lead to a greater future, freedom, and a life our next guest believes should be available for all. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you so much for having me. It's great to be here. Now you are one that I would say is really bringing people along in the next generation because you're helping them know that they are welcome. Absolutely. What got you into this? To become an immigration lawyer, I never thought that's what I was going to do, but I had an opportunity to work on an immigration case when I was at my corporate law firm, when I was just starting out as a very young lawyer for a Japanese potter and his family who made the most beautiful form of ceramics and pottery, and he's carrying on this tradition, seven generations in Japan, and he was an artist in residence at Harvard University, and I got the honor of doing his green card case and showing the, the uh, Department of Homeland Security um, that he is one of the best potters and yeah. artists in his field. And, you know, and we you know, laid out a strategy and accomplished it. And it took like you know, a year and a half, but you know, their lives were so forever changed. They were so grateful. We partied, <laughs> you know? And that celebration just showed me that instead of the other work I was doing, which was not resonating with me as much, mm -hmm. wasn't necessarily touching people, this was something that I thought I could spend my life doing, so I decided to do that. Yes, and you know, you wrote a book on this, and I have to say immigration is such a hot topic right now yeah. because we're seeing all these images on the news, and some of the stories are extremely sad yes. that are being featured, and a lot of the time people are trying to do what's right. Yes. Why are we not seeing more of that? these stories out there? The messaging that sometimes gets sent out across the country by different politicians who have particular agendas isn't accurate, and it's messaging of fear and messaging of, of actually hate sometimes towards immigrants in general, painting everyone with a broad brush as, as people who are, you know, maybe criminals, when mm. in fact the vast majority of immigrants to the United States have never committed a crime in their lives. And the government, especially during the prior administration, actually had a policy of jailing people who tried to cross the border, even though the majority of those people never committed a crime in their life. And it's really an honor for me to try to, try to save someone and their family and show the world and the American people that most immigrants, our neighbors, coworkers, friends, are people of very high ethical values. They care about democracy. They want to live and contribute to the United States. And they are. They're doing jobs that, you know, oftentimes other people won't or can't do. They're working on the front lines of COVID. Mm -hmm. And they're inventing things, <sighs> starting companies, creating jobs. 
And I think it's really important not to focus on fear mongering and stereotyping immigrants and to focus on individual stories. Individual stories, I wanna hear some. I have a young man I represented who came to this country uh, from a country that's in Central Asia. I can't say what country it, it is, but it's been in the news quite a bit. And he is someone who wanted to get an education in the United States and go back to his country to try to bring democratic principles, principles of human rights and democracy to his country. And he founded a nonprofit to help girls and to help educate girls in his country and to show girls are equal to boys mm. and have a right to education just like anyone else do and that it's a human right. How did this man find you? Yeah, he <laughs> actually found me through a nonprofit organization called PEAR, which is the Political Asylum Immigration Representation Project, which is a wonderful nonprofit that helps asylum seekers who can't afford a lawyer. Mm -hmm. And I was on their list. I'm actually the president of their board. <laughs> But I, I've been working with that organization forever, and I actually volunteered to do his case. He actually he couldn't go back because his life was in danger. He truly would have been killed if he'd gone back to his country just because he wanted to try to bring really important values in, in, to his country and try to make his country a safer place. And he then just got his PhD a few months ago. And you know what he wants to do? He's, he's an economist and just wants to make things better for poor people and marginalized people in this country. And he's brilliant. Wow. And he wants to try to make this country a better place. And he's doing it. And is he officially a citizen now? Next week. Oh, Next week. That's he's amazing. He's interview for his citizenship. I mean, talk about changing lives. Let's, yeah. let's talk about some of the young kids that you've impacted. Yeah. There was a little girl who came to this country with her family who was a violin prodigy. Who, and um, her mom was working on a religious worker visa at a church. Um, but the religious worker visa was going to expire soon, and the family had hired an immigration lawyer to try to help them get green cards. But he was ghosting them and not answering their calls, and they didn't know anything that was happening with their mm -hmm. case, and the time was running out on her visa. And she was one of the best violinists under the age of 12 in the world. <sighs> and somebody found me and said, this family's going to, their visas are going to run out in one week. Can you save them? It was a very intense week. But um, she ended up going to Harvard. Wow. Yeah. It's amazing that these faces, that they really are looking to you to inspire them and right. give them the hope. Yes. They then in return give the hope back. And I'm sure are inspiring yeah, everyone, no they pressure. <laughs> everyone they come in contact with. Well, thank you so much for yeah. coming on. Thank you for having me. A media maker and a singer that reminds you that your Valley moments could be impacting not only yourself, but the legacy you will leave. I needed to remind myself what I was doing and why I was doing it, and that helped me kind of refocus my faith and, and my mission. We've seen him in numerous roles over the years. However, when we sat down with Mark Wahlberg on his recent film, Father Stew, we discovered how it truly impacted his own heart. One thing that really caught my attention was the major transitions throughout Father Stu's life. Tell us, how did that resonate with the transitions with your character and your own personal life? Well, certainly a lot there that I could relate to and identify with on a personal level. You know, the story to me was just so powerful and so inspiring. I thought it was it was a must to be a part of and tell and continue to, you know, project Stu's voice to the masses. And I heard just how brutally honest he was in the amount of work that he did in the short amount of time uh, in the priesthood. I had actually then heard from the bishop who had ordained him that he felt like Stu had done more in his four short years than the bishop had done in his 40 years. In the movie, we follow a boxer who decides to chase his Hollywood dream and along the way discovers his true calling. You know, people really, really identified with Stu on a personal level, uh, just the way he communicated to them. It felt like they were talking to somebody they could really trust and confide in, and, uh, and somebody who could relate to them and understand what they were going through because he had a lot of real life experience himself. During this movie and taping, did you get closer to God? You know, it's weird. I've been uh, a man of faith for quite some time, but I think with COVID, the inability to go to church, to experience the Eucharist and those things, it really kind of tested my faith, let's mm -hmm. say. You know, it's still been tough because, you know, having gone to church, you know, almost every day and then going, certainly gone to mass every week to not being able to go at all. 
Um, that's that's a difficult time. What would you say to the person that is trying to reach that next point in their own life? I would I would and I do really rely a lot on prayer, meditation, things of that nature, reading. Um, I rely a lot on just exercise to kind of give me the strength to kind of attack the day. But the work, it's it, the work. So whatever kind of works for you. Um, but you set goals for yourself and you do take the proper steps. To, to achieve those goals and build the foundation. So it's not like you're you're getting there quickly, but you don't really have the, the, the fundamental skills that you need to continue to maintain something like that. And then go to the next level. But you'd be surprised, people who are setting goals for themselves and actually do the work, they find that not only do they achieve their goals quickly, they're certainly surpassing them and then finding new goals and new expectations to achieve. What do you want people to take away? What are you hoping the big messaging is? Well, the best thing about it is everybody takes something away from it, for sure. It's a guarantee because we're all going through similar things in life, especially within the pandemic. There's so much uncertainty. Obviously, mortality is inevitable. We've all lost somebody to COVID, know somebody who's lost somebody to COVID. People have lost their jobs, their homes, their businesses. And just, you know, and a lot of people have lost hope and faith. So everybody is taking something away from it. What I've never had in a film that I've done, and I've done a lot of films, and I've done a lot of meaningful films, and especially uh, based on real people and true events, is that people from all walks of life are saying how much they can see themselves in Stu. thing I think that is the big common uh, theme is that everybody's walking out saying, oh my God, I should be doing more, I should be doing better, and I should be doing something for somebody in need. And it challenges people to just be a little bit better, but it also reminds people that nobody is beyond redemption and that, you know, we have faith and hope in people. As long as people are willing to change and grow, we want to love them, support them, and include everybody. And this is a film for everybody, for sure. And that's a powerful message to pass on. Next up, an Olympian that has a goal greater than his gold medal. This is the story of a man who has overcome, beaten the odds, and persevered. His start to swimming was no different than what we just mentioned. However, for Olympic swimmer Colin Jones, his end game was golden. At the age of five, I almost drowned. Um, my parents wanted to take me to a water park. I went, I had not had swim lessons, formal swim lessons at that time. After a traumatic experience with water, Colin refused to let that deter him. In fact, he decided to ride the tide and pursue it competitively. Getting into swimming, I was getting my butt kicked. I got the purple and pink ribbon, sixth and seventh place. I, I just loved how hard it was. When it came to training for swimming, if I pushed myself harder, I saw that result when I raced against whoever I was racing. 2006, uh, it was actually kind of crazy. I was swimming in a meet, I was really tired, and I just come internationally, and I was racing against this guy I was looking across the pool and he just, well, standing next to me, I was just looking at him and he looked like he, there was no way he was gonna lose. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna beat this kid's butt. He's younger than me. I'm a little bit taller. I can beat him. I'm gonna beat you, Phelps. That's right. And I was swam against him in the 100 freestyle and we both went 48. He went 48.8, I went 48.9. Yes, he did beat me. He beat me, but he looked over and he said to me, man, finally we have our fourth guy for the 4x100 relay. I went back and I trained my face off that summer and I was able to swim in the 4x100 relay with Michael Phelps, Neil Walker, and Jason Lezak and I set a world record and I was the first Black American to set a world record in 2006. I didn't realize what that swim did back home for, for the U.S. I didn't realize how many people saw that and I was, saw these young swimmers coming up to me, asking me for my autograph, and it hit me that they look up to me at this point. It hits you very different. And since that moment, I said that I want to be a pillar for this sport, but across the board. And speaking of the younger generation, check this next clip out. Wolf Boy and the Everything Factory is a show that is encouraging kids to use their imagination to achieve greatness. This show, I think, is, uh, you know, and I'm a dad, too, and, and I find that a lot of stuff that's made for kids is sort of, it's just hyper-stimulating, but oftentimes a little empty. And this has such a sincere heart and soul, and it's really about something. There's a moral to the story. It's about being creative, using your imagination, being yourself, even if 
there are voices around you that tell you you're weird. And I think it, it really has important lessons to, to, for kids to learn. And it's a genuinely positive thing for kids to watch. So I'm really proud of it for that reason. Archie Yates, the voice of the character Sprout, has already been impacted by the show firsthand. One of the most important things that this show or working on this show has taught me is um, the message that Sprout gives out to people in which is do not let your fears control you, otherwise they'll just ruin everything for you. Um, I actually do stress a lot about unnecessary things that I shouldn't be stressing about because I know that I'll do fine, I just can't help it. And that causes me a lot of stress. And sometimes I just need to take a break for a few days. Uh, but that message really taught me that I don't need to be worried anymore. This show is a reminder that inspiration can be for all ages. They say you can learn a lot by walking in someone else's shoes. And that's exactly what this dad and daughter duo are doing. In 2013 in Maryland, there was a young man with Down syndrome, uh, went to the movies. His caregiver went to get the car. He decided he was going to go back in and watch the movie again, but he didn't have a ticket. He refused to leave, so they called the police department. Eventually, they, they picked him up by the arms and started to take him out of the theater. Uh, but at some point, he wound up face down on the ground, and anybody, regardless of disability, can't breathe like that. And so he died over a 12 hour movie ticket. This hit home for Tom, who is the dad of a spunky, funny, and dancing little girl, who also happens to have Down syndrome. After learning about this story, I knew that I had to do something to see that that doesn't happen again. We wanted to meet this bright light that created such an inspiration. So we did. You want to tell me a little bit about yourself? Tell Whitney, tell Whitney what your name is. I'm Whitney Fletcher. She's in a very good mood right now, but, but that mood changes. Emily's moods can change throughout the day. Her, she, she has ups and downs all day long because of her disability. Things just change, and, and a lot of people don't understand that, and a lot of people uh, have issues dealing with that, and that's something I'm trying to change. And that's exactly what inspired a life-changing and saving series. Welcome to the show. Thank you. What did you form? We just watched that video and oh, you spoke so from the heart. What exactly came out of that story? What came out of that story was my desire to do what I could to not let that happen again. Uh, my background is in, emer is in emergency services and well, with Emily being my daughter, I see both sides of that situation of those of those encounters so it was obvious that that what i needed to do was start talking to whoever i could especially folks in emergency services and, and help them understand if they come across anybody like emily or anybody with any sort of disability sometimes the way you're going to handle that is different than someone who's neurotypical one thing we saw was emily's mood can change is that one of the things that you inform first responders about like she could be cooperating one second and then exactly, the next. Exactly, absolutely. What I tell people in, in our talks is if you get nothing else out of what I'm saying, you need to be patient. If mm -hmm. she's not having a good time, if she's not gonna, if she is not compliant with whatever it is that's going on, sometimes you, you're not gonna have any choice but to wait. Tell us, it's called Emily Talks. It's the Emily, it's the Emily Talk, yeah. Yeah, so are you going into schools? Yeah, we've gone into high schools, we've did a, we did a, very different version for our grade school, you know, for the grade school kids. Uh, but we've gone into one of the local high schools and talked to support staff, uh, you know, teachers aides to help them understand because they have students that have some sort of disability. What do you hope people take away from these talks? A better understanding of, of how Emily rolls. Uh, one of the things I tell them during the Emily talk is, this is also a chance for you to see Emily and interact with Emily and see how she interacts with you if she decides to do so and see how she interacts with me again if she decides to do so. Do you want this to be everywhere? I do, yeah. How crucial yeah. do you think it is? Oh, it, it's it's very crucial. It's 
I mean, you can, an, a, a cursory internet search will show you, I mean, probably on a daily basis, there are, there are folks that are uh, being mishandled by, by school staff, by, by emergency responders, because they don't understand. Mm. They don't understand how uh, someone like Emily or someone who's on the autism spectrum, who can appear quite normal, but, but because, of their, because of their disability, they have trouble processing what's going on around them and they, they don't mean to be non-compliant, but they are. And if you understand why they're being non-compliant, then mm. you're, you're less likely to let this escalate into something that it ought not escalate into. Right, and so is that one of the things you teach is like how to de-escalate? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, again, it's, it's all about being patient. If there's, if there's no reason to move Emily from the movie theater because she doesn't want to leave, don't move her. The new normal is the buzzword now since the pandemic, the new normal. Uh, we've been living new normal for 26 years. Um, to some degree, everybody has a new normal. Something happens in your life and things change and you have to adapt to that. That's your new normal. Emily's normal, my normal, is certainly not your normal. And if you if you want to understand how how Emily's normal runs, this is your chance. That, that's that's one of the that's what the Emily talk is about. To teach them here's here's how things work. That is so amazing. Well, thank you so much for coming on today. Thank you. Thanks for having me. The power of influence can impact people at any age and even online. Let's take a look. Navy veteran Chris Cavallini is an influencer who also happens to be an entrepreneur, speaker, philanthropist, and those are just a few of the titles he holds. However, it wasn't always that way. I was arrested 17 times before my 18th birthday. My mother had me, she was super young, she was 16. Dad took off before I was even born. So as a result of, of, of that dynamic, spent some time in foster care, group homes, moved around a little bit. Certain situations just kind of cultivated uh, different behavioral issues uh, in me as a young man. And it got to a point in my life where, you know, I was a drug dealer, hanging out with other drug dealers, everything from fighting, underage drinking, trespassing, breaking and entering. Some of my drug dealer friends started to get in trouble. I, I kind of just realized that, you know, it was only a matter of time before my time came and, and, and that knock came to my door. And I became really obsessed with that thought of what my life was going to look like if I didn't start making some changes. And I didn't want that. I wanted certainty. I, I didn't want to be a loser. I wanted to create a better life for myself. And this is a message he not only shares with us here today, but also with his hundreds of thousands of followers online. I think personal development is without question, I mean, at least for me, the most important work of your life. It is um, an essential tool needed for growth. The purpose of it is to help you think different. I truly believe something inside me said that I was put here on this planet to do something on a higher level, but I truly had no idea what that was. And so through a combination of personal development, grit, tenacity, uh, discipline and consistency, I was able to go from you know a drug dealer who had no goals, no purpose, uh, no education, no money to you know now I run a multi million dollar business where uh, a national company rapidly growing. I think it's really a testament of the fact that we all have the same ability and same opportunity to create the change that we want to create. What's important that we have to recognize we're not defined by our past, we're not defined by where we grew up, the people that we grew up around. We're defined by the choices we make now that give us the ability and opportunity to create future we want for ourselves. Next up, a young entrepreneur who overcame hardship as a child to become the CEO of his own branding company. Hi, my name is Luke Lintz and I made seven figures when I was in high school in grade 11. When I was younger, I went through a lot of hardship in terms of my parents having an extreme divorce and leaving a lot of like PTSD basically uh, in my life. And one of the things that I developed a bit was a stutter because I wasn't able to communicate properly with uh, with other people. And like when other people gave me the chance to speak, I just wanted to blurt it all out because I felt like people wouldn't listen to me. Overcoming his struggles as a child, Luke found success by making sure he didn't give up. For people who are starting out, 
I would say try as many things as possible. And I would say just persevere through everything and just keep keep on going. The only real time you can lose and every single time I reflect back at my past, like problems and like past things that uh, went extremely wrong in our businesses, none of it was, was losses. And I never lost in any of those things because I learned from them. And the only time I would have lost is if I actually quit. And I never quit through any of it. And I, w I was able to make it to where I am now with, with my brothers in the business that we're doing. And I'm, I'm very happy about that. And so I think that's a huge aspect and a huge component is just, just not quitting. If you continue to do it and continue to work hard, try and work more efficiently, I, I don't think you can lose. We end with a story of true perseverance. Marco Champion shares his story of how his life could have changed forever. When I was younger, I was super, super passionate about skateboarding. When I was 15, I ended up getting ran over by a car. The doctors said that there's a big chance I would be stuck in a wheelchair for the rest of my life. While the doctors were doubtful that he could walk again, Marco set his mind to one goal, being able to get up and move forward. I was so passionate about skateboarding that I just wanted to get back up and ride. I didn't really care at that point to be pro. I just cared about doing what I loved. And so every day I was like, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna get back up. I'm gonna ride my skateboard once more. And that passion was like what gave me the energy to continue staying motivated. Eventually the doctors called it a miracle. I, uh, you know, my nerves came back to my legs. I had shattered my pelvis. I broke my spine, nerves damaged to my legs so I couldn't walk. It took a lot of months for me to be able to recover, but it was definitely my passion that drove me. Marco now uses his story to inspire others to never lose sight of their goal. We all have the same power to do whatever we set our mind to, as long as we stay motivated. And so I started a brand called Motive to inspire other people to stay motivated and to do what they love because their life that they want to create is there for them as long as they continue pushing forward. From immigrants to media stars, today's guests remind us that our legacy can actually be a living legacy but we can also leave behind greatness for generations to come. Remember, your story matters. The Whitney Reynolds Show is made possible by Yates Protect, a minority-owned business focused on protecting communities and providing solutions to safety problems for public and private institutions, including air purification, metal detectors, thermal detection, and more. Safety is a right, not a privilege. And by O'Connor Law Firm. When it comes to your injuries, we take it seriously. Carrie McCormick, a real estate broker with At Properties. With more than 20 years of experience, she understands the importance of the customer relationship during your real estate journey. Theraderm, committed to developing skin products designed to restore and promote natural beauty. Cyton, because results matter. Additional funding provided by Midwest Moving and Storage. Galileo, the gumdrop by Delos Therapy. Happy to meet you. Kevin Kelly with Jamison Sotheby's International Realty. Fresh Dental. Ella's Bubbles, Tutu School Chicago, High Five Sports Camp, and these funders. Go beyond the interview with Whitney Reynolds and her 52-week guide of inspiration. The book goes deeper into the topics you see on The Whitney Reynolds Show. To get your copy for $12.95 plus shipping and handling, go to WhitneyReynolds.com backslash store and use code PBS. For more information on today's program, visit WhitneyReynolds.com or follow us on social media on Twitter at Whitney Reynolds and on Instagram at Whitney underscore Reynolds.